Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Well, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Prime Time Local News. Connor, Chan, and Abby St. John here to start the week off for you, including with our question of the day segment. Coming up later on the show, what is your biggest pet peeve? For me, it's people that are late. I yep. can't take it. That's definitely on my list. Mine is a very, very long list. Um, but, you know, the t uh, biggest ones are probably loud chewers, pen clickers, being late, toe tapping. There's a lot. Yeah, you're right. That yeah, is a lot. Yeah, a lot. There's a lot on my list. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I don't know if I have time to go through all of that, but we'll go through some of the comments that you left on our question of the day later on in the show. But right now, we're going to send over to Eric Bay, who's on location. Thanks, guys. Well, with Canadian Mental Health Week coming up next week, we are talking with Laura Lee Marin from Alberta Health Services about the new Move Your Mood program coming to Lloydminster. It was a pilot program started in Red Deer, and it's for students in grades 5 to 9, just giving them a little bit of help about their mental well-being through a few different pillars, such as what they are eating, uh, their physical activity, and also just expanding their mind to help them again, giving them some skills with that mental health. So we're going to have all that and more coming up, but first we're going to send it back into the studio to take a look at your local news. Thanks, Eric. Local RCMP, along with the RCMP Major Crimes Unit, are investigating after a man was found dead near Rendell Park School. Lloydminster RCMP received calls of shots being fired at about 7.40 p.m. on Saturday and found the victim. Our members from the Lloydminster RCMP detachment responded to multiple calls of shots being fired in the residential neighborhood in the area of 56th Avenue and 31st Street in Lloydminster. A deceased male was located inside a vehicle. At that time, our RCMP Major Crimes Unit was called in to assist uh, the Lloyd Minister RCMP Detachment, as well as our Forensic Identification Services Unit. The name of the man has not been released. An autopsy, autopsy will take place in Edmonton on Wednesday. At this time, police do not believe there is any danger to the public. We, we don't believe that uh, there's any additional uh, incidents that uh, possibly uh, could occur as a result of this particular one. But again, it's very early on in, in its uh, infancy in regards to this investigation. So any tips that uh, are, are received through the public, we'd appreciate that. The RCMP is unable to provide any more information at this time. Anyone with tips are asked to contact the R Lloydminster RCMP or Crime Stoppers. The Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lloydminster are currently looking for more mentors. They currently have 27 kids on the waiting list. They are looking for Big Brothers Big Sisters as well as a couples match or an in-school mentor. We always need mentors and uh, our community is really great at providing that support for agency. Um, but it, it is a great opportunity for people to get involved. The activities you do as a mentor tailors to what your interests are and your time commitment. And one week you might just go to Tim Hortons for coffee if that's the only time you have or go out for lunch. And then the next week if you, if it's Christmas time, some of the matches do Christmas baking all Saturday. So it just depends what your interests are. Some matches do yard work, some matches go swimming or to Bud Miller. So again, what your interests are kind of dictates um, what you're going to do for that week and what your time commitment might be. To register as a mentor, head down to their office to get started. The North American Occupational Safety and Health Week has been going on for decades. In this week's retrospect, I take a look at how the city has made their own event. The Lakeland Regional Safety Committee has been celebrating NAOSH Week for decades through a special trade show. Mayos Week uh, is something that uh, the Lakeland Regional Safety Committee has is, is, uh, uh, been putting on every year. And this year, uh, as in, in past years, we've got a barbecue and several safety displays. The week is celebrated throughout Canada, the U.S. and Mexico. It was recognized several years ago that uh, many workers are getting injured in the workplace. And so one way to be able to try and promote uh, some better way of living and better way of working 
is to help people with information. Flash forward to now and the city has created their own event to promote workplace safety called Mind on Safety and Health Week, also known as MOSH. It's a three-day event where we have keynote speakers coming in, we have breakout sessions, and the focus is on giving our employees the tools and skills they need to succeed, as well as affirming their commitment with, with the keynote. MOSH Week follows the National Day of Mourning, which took place yesterday, as a way to honor all the lives lost due to a workplace injury. One of the messages that uh, we've certainly talked a lot about at Council, and, and uh, I know our mayor sort of leads the charge on this, but uh, one of our goals that we have and we talk about it is that every one of our employees that come to work in the morning should be able to go home safely at night. And, uh, and I think that that's just in the simplest terms, that's kind of what safety is all about for us. Mosh Week is important to the city because being able to prevent an accident in the workplace is the difference between a life lost. You know, if one person dying at a work injury is... Uh, not acceptable and I recognize again that uh, people are, are fallible, they're human and, and equipment breaks. Uh, but I think you know if you look at the stats most of the time people say that most of these uh, accidents in the workplace can be prevented. That's it for this week's Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by Webs Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webs Ford in Vermilion. Now we're going to Eric Bay, who is on location today. I'm joined here now by Loralee Marin of Alberta Health Services, and we're talking a little bit now about the Move Your Mood program that is now coming to Vermilion. So uh, can you maybe just give a general uh, background about the Move Your Mood program? Well, I'd love to. And so Move Your Mood was developed in Red Deer by one of my team members, and she's done a lot of research around it, and it uses research to... Um, help physical activity to improve your mood and so we really know that physical activity can support positive mental well-being and so it's um, an, an opportunity for kids to come into a fun field environment and uh, and learn how to move their body that really enhances um, both their physical and mental well-being. And uh, what age range of the kids is allowed and how are they selected for the program? So um, we're looking in Vermilion as a pilot project to uh, expand this to communities across Central Zone. So we're excited to offer it to students in Vermilion from grade 5 to 9. And we have a couple of mentors that are from high school that will be part of the program as well. And that just builds their skills to uh, invest back into younger children as well. So the children are identified either if parents can say, we'd like our kids to participate in this activity. Um, it's free for the community. It also offers this you know, free opportunity for kids to uh, enjoy some different physical activities and uh, learning in the community that maybe they wouldn't have the opportunity to otherwise. And uh, we also have the VIBE team, so that's the mental health capacity building coaches from the schools who work with kids every day. And they're just suggesting to kids and their families that, hey, this might be a great opportunity for you to um, find a way to be more active and to uh, enhance their, their physical and mental well-being. All right, perfect. Well, thank you for that. We'll have a little bit more coming back from here. But first, we're going to head back into the studio. All right, thanks very much, Eric. Taking a look at your current temperature right now. Gotten more cloudier than last hour. Sitting at 5 degrees still. We did see that snow mix that we were expecting. Bit of an uh, awkward day, I guess you want to say, for weather, given how it was cloudy at one point, and then a few seconds later, we saw all those blue skies again. The wind started to die down, though. We're only sitting at 5 kilometers an hour coming in from the northwest there. Warmest day this time in uh, 1987 was at 24 degrees. Our coldest day was at minus 7 back in 2009. So let's take a look at the satellite radar map because we're going to be seeing a bit of activity over the next couple of days. We're expecting a 55% chance of a rain-snow mix for tomorrow and a 54% chance we'll see some uh, rain on on the Wednesday, excuse me. Uh, so a lot of that still activity in the southern parts of Alberta, as we did see earlier, how the Calgary was mostly affected in that re region there. So we're going to still expect some snow and some rain over the next couple of days. To other current temperatures, eight degrees in Athabasca, six for Edmonton, two in Red Deer and Edson, five degrees for Jasper, three for Rocky Mountain House, seven degrees out in White Court, six for Meadow Lake, nine out in Prince Albert, seven degrees in Melfort and Saskatoon, and one degree currently right now in North Battleford. So let's take a look at a little more in-depth look into. North Battleford stay on the subject there. Minus five overnight with some bit of cloud covers there. Warming up to seven degrees tomorrow for the daytime high where more sun will pop up than normal. Overnight in Cold Lake, minus four with some flurries overnight. Warming up to three degrees tomorrow with a sun cloud mix there. They're also going to be experiencing some flurries as well. Overnight for us here, the snow won't start until tomorrow for us. Minus three overnight with cloud coverage. Four degrees tomorrow, the daytime high where we will see that 55% chance of some snow. So as you take a look at the next three days, 
today. Seven degrees will be the high there, a low of minus seven. It's going to be a little cooler in the mornings over the next couple of days. 54% chance of rain and snow mixed there. Eight degrees on Thursday where the sun should pop back out. A little bit warmer and a bit more sunnier than we're going to see over the next couple of days. That's a first look at your weather. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. Welcome back. Calving season is in full swing across the country. Gerard Lampau finds out the next steps for the furry little bovines. Calves on the ground, most of the snow is gone and so far so good as calving season is off to a solid start. Dr. Nathan Erickson at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine wants producers to be on top of their game as they get into spring vaccines. Vaccination will not prevent all disease. Vaccine will provide improved immunity for your animals, which can be seen as having less numbers of cases of disease, uh, reduced severity of disease, and then also a quicker recovery from disease as well. Controlling the effects of disease is better than having a wreck in your newborns. Still, there are persistent bugs around. We definitely still have problems with clostridial diseases such as black leg in our calves and I have seen outbreaks even as recently as last fall of black leg in non-vaccinated herds. So vaccinating calves for clostridial disease with a seven or an eight-way vaccine will definitely reduce that risk. Erickson also stresses vaccinations as calves undergo various medical procedures. Also, if we're castrating our calves or even dehorning, we want to make sure that we are vaccinating them with uh, tetanus as well. Erickson reminds producers of where vaccines are to be administered on livestock. So if the vaccine says to inject under the skin, subcutaneous, or in the muscle, intramuscular, we want to make sure that we're doing that properly. And then if we're injecting them with a subcutaneous or an intramuscular, we want to make sure that we're giving that vaccine or injecting that vaccine in the neck. For nasal vaccines, Erickson says, make sure to apply to the nostrils of the animal and not in the neck. The effective use of vaccines begins with proper handling and storage. Vaccines should be stored in the middle shelves of the refrigerator. That is the area where there is the most consistent temperature. In the doors, produce drawers, closer to freezer compartments or top shelves or near the vent in the refrigerators. Those are areas where there's less consistent temperatures. Also when we're using the vaccines that we're keeping them on ice packs or if it's a colder time of year, you know, warm enough as well so they don't freeze. With a live vaccine, the final tip is to watch the clock. As soon as a modified live vaccine has been mixed, you only have one to two hours to use up that vaccine. So storage of the vaccine is not good after it's mixed. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. Coming up tonight on Ag Life, financial incentives for beef producers as VBP Plus continues to pay dividends and farm blues. We find out what's on producers' minds ahead of seeding season, plus a major in equine science is just one of the new courses at Lakeland College as well. What is stand establishment? Those stories are on the menu tonight at 7.30 on Ag Life. We'll see you then. That's all for Ag. Sports is next, but first, here's a look at your egg prices. Every member of the City Center Auto Body team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair technique. After almost losing to Battle River, the Lloyd Minster Red Dogs showed, it, it showed improvement in a 27-13 victory over St. Albert. A pick six late in the game sealed the victory for the Red Dogs, but there was cleaner play throughout the lineup. Boys are a little more consistent offensively and defensively, so that was good to see as we're coming into the final couple games. The Red Dogs take on the Edmonton Mustangs in their final regular season game this weekend. 
the Holy Rosary Raiders badminton program has 17 athletes in action today at the 3A Zone Championships. The Raiders have gold medal winners from districts in senior and intermediate boys doubles, senior and junior boys singles and senior mixed doubles, with five athletes or pairs also earning silver. Zone winners qualify for provincials this weekend in Edmonton. And now we're going to Eric Bay who is on location today. Once again, I'm back here joined by Laura Lee Marin of Alberta Health Services and we've been talking about the Move Your Mood program that is coming to Vermilion. And there's four different kind of sections of the Move Your Mood program and what are those? So each week the youth that are participating will be able to experience um, activities that help them move their, their body. And so building their confidence to be physically active and expose them to things that they might not otherwise have the opportunity to. They'll also learn how to practice mindfulness so we share with them different strategies to um, to practice mindfulness, so looking at their breathing, um, ways that they can uh, work to, towards being present in the moment, and ways to manage strong emotions if they experience them. And then we have this great way of expanding their mind, so thinking about things about gratefulness and kindness and those things that we live in everyday life, so not an addition to life, just how you live it. And uh, we're excited to share with them some opportunities to expand their mind. And finally, they get to fuel their body, and so we'll be looking every Every week at a nutrition component, the kids will have an opportunity to make some healthy snacks, to learn about healthy foods and how um, foods impact their, their well-being. And uh, you mentioned there the last one, you're talking a little bit about people's nutrition. I think for the most part, uh, physical fitness is something people talk about a lot, but the nutrition is kind of overlooked for that mental well-being. So what kind of foods or what kind of diet, are, how does that kind of affect people's or mental well-being that is? So um, we know that food plays a significant role into their mental well-being. and. Uh, um, and so we want to just let them kind of discover for themselves when they eat certain f foods, um, how does that impact their mood and how does it impact how their body feels? And uh, does it give them fuel and good energy to move forward? And so helping them journal and discover um, what foods make them uh, feel like they have more energy and, and feel more well. Also, uh, making sure that the kids uh, know like what is always foods and what are sometimes foods. And so we're not telling them to never eat some of those foods, but um, to really find balance in their foods. All right, perfect. Thank you once again for joining us. We'll have a little bit more coming back from here, but first we're going to send it back into the studio. All right, thanks very much, Eric. Take a look at some other crew temperatures right now. Oh, excuse me, I skipped. I jumped the gun a little bit too soon here, but we'll start here anyways. Six degrees out in La Lage, six in Buffalo Narrow, six in La Range, four degrees out in Fort, uh, Slave Lake, rather. Five degrees for Grand Prairie, seven for Peace River, zero out in High Level in Fort McMurray, minus one in Fort Chippewain, minus one also out in Uranium City in Stony Rapids, six degrees in La Lage, six for Buffalo Narrows and La Range, five for Flint Flon, three degrees in Wallison Lake, two degrees for South End. Down in southern Saskatchewan, four degrees out in Moose Jaw, five for Regina, six degrees out in Kindersley, Coronation, and Yorkton, three degrees out in Esteban. Over in Alberta, five degrees for Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, three degrees for Calgary, and one degree for Banff as well. Now let's take a look at our regional temperatures for tomorrow. We're going to see mostly fours across the board here for the immediate region here. So four for us here tomorrow in Lloydminster, four degrees in Vermilion, four for Marwayne, Vagerville, Edmonton, five down in Wainwright and Provost. A little bit cooler up in Bonneville, Cold Lake area at three degrees, also three degrees in Pearson, Lac La Biche, and St. Paul sitting at two degrees, six degrees out in Macklin, seven degrees for North Battleford, four degrees in St. Wahlberg, Meadow Lake, and Green Lake, one degree out in Isle of Cross. Now I did mention we are going to be seeing a 55% chance of a snow, snow tomorrow, and then Wednesday we'll see that 54% chance of a rain snow mix. So let's take a look here at the snow accumulation map over the next couple of 24 hours here. So as you can see, the light blue is kind of not quite fully reaching us there in the Lloydminster area, but it'll start to pick up a little bit on as we reach into Thursday afternoon and the evening there. All that big majority, the larger stuff's going up in northern BC there. And of course, down still kind of in the southwest parts there of southern Alberta there, of course, where they did get hit the most over on the weekend. But we should see, if anything, less than up to a centimeter or maybe just slightly over one centimeter of snow. So let's take a look at the school day forecast tomorrow as kids are now back to school there. Minus one on 8 a.m. with some flurries. One degree at recess time with cloudy skies and some flurries. Lunchtime, three degrees with a sun and cloud mix there. We're mostly cloudy. Four degrees at home time where we'll be the daytime high there with a the sun and clouds. First step for us tomorrow, seven, not, not tomorrow, seven days 
7 degrees on Wednesday, the 54% chance we'll get some rain snow mix there as I mentioned earlier. 8 degrees Thursday where the sun will come out a little bit more with no chance of precipitation there. 5 degrees Friday, the 65% chance of some rain. 6 on Saturday, 7 on Sunday, 9 degrees on Monday. Very cloudy weekend ahead of us here, but we'll take a break now. We'll have more primetime local news coming up. And now we're going to Eric Bay who is on location today. Back here once again and now I'm joined by Laura Lee Marin as well and we are talking again about the Move Your Mood program that is coming to Vermilion and how it, it's not just for kids, there's also a parent component to it as well. So what can the parents do to get involved? Well, we recognize that we're going to have about an hour and a half with these youth each week and we want to make sure that they can um, continue the successes that they experience when they go home with their parents and caregivers. So we have a parent component that each week will tell them, this is what your child learned about moving their body, this is what your child learned about fueling their body, around mindfulness and around expanding their mind. And so these are ways that you can help them. We know it's important that parents have good information because they want to do the best for their uh, children as well. And so giving them that in a quick read, uh, uh, one page format so that every week they can s continue that learning uh, in their home environment was really significant. And now parents, if they are just looking for some of that extra information that they, they want just to, so maybe they can better inform their children as well, how can they find some more information? So each week at Move Your Mood, when the parents come to drop off or pick up their children, we'll have a team of coaches and uh, mental health and, and physical educators available that they can connect with and ask for more specific information on maybe they have some things that are uh, happening with their child that they need a little bit of support or a referral to either a mental health specialist or to um, a physiotherapist, etc. And so we want to really make sure that we help them get connected and feel supported in the community and able to access information that's important for them, for their family and for their child. And uh, maybe just real quick, is there any like quick tips and tricks that you have right now just for parents like if they are, if they do see their child maybe struggling, what they can do to help? So opening up that line of communication to them is really important and just sitting back and not trying to solve their problems but really giving them an opportunity to explore it together and then reaching out is really important so we have a team of really great uh, specialists that can support them in Vermilion and the vibe coaches of course are always a wonderful for support to them all right perfect thank you for, again for joining us we're gonna have a little bit more coming back from here but first we'll throw it back into the studio All right, so our question of the day today, what is some of your biggest pet peeves? There's a lot, it's a pretty common question to really ask. I mean, people do have those. So just reading a few of the comments, loud talkers and cell phones in public. Oh, yes, no, don't like that's on the list. <laughs> no, that's definitely not something people like. Um, the Another one was, uh, uh, sorry, I just losing my train. I thought people who don't wash their hands after using the washroom. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's kind of unsanitary. Another one that I just thought of was slow walkers. Yeah. Yeah, especially in very busy, high traffic scenarios. Yeah. It's really annoying when you're walking behind someone that's super slow. Yeah, it's like a highway or a, like a lane because you, know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta maneuver, maneuver your way. I have one friend that I'm, he matches my speed because we walk the same way. Yeah. And then when I'm with other people that walk, I walk really fast, they're kind of just like, you're know, like, they always complain too much. Where, yeah. And that's another pet peeve common action, people who complain about everything. Yes, about everything yeah, that, uh, I've definitely heard that you walk too fast. Like I'm just walking my normal pace. Yeah. I so. just want to get somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about something that we all enjoy, and that's pets, because we don't have any problems with them. There's a picture of Gunner oh, to start things precious. off here. Very adorable indeed. Next, we have Marcus. I love the love name. Love it. I love the name, too. Next, we have Ivory and Chef, bunny dog duo oh, there. Best friends. Next, we have Cloud. Very Fresh. pretty. Yes, very pretty. And last but not least, this is Hera and Haiti. Just the cutest pups. Very adorable. Well, if your pet was shown on today, you're automatically answered to win a Lloydminster Pet Pack gift card, which you're giving away at the end of the week. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pack. So excited today to be joined by Rufi and Tony, who's joining me here in the studio in Lloydminster. Thank you both for joining me, and we have some really exciting news. Uh, Tony, do you want to talk about first of all what Rufi is going to be doing, where he's headed to perform? So in July of uh, July 12 to the 21st, Rufi will be uh, joining us um, in Long Beach, California, mm -hmm. uh, for the World Championship of Performing Arts. 
and this is a talent competition, an international talent competition done once a year, uh, where um, this year there's 73 countries participating, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the countries send the best of the best. And Rufi will be uh, joining us uh, with Team Canada, and uh, hopefully bring home some gold medals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Rufi, uh, you were telling me that, that performing is not something that's new to you. You've been no. doing it for quite some time. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about uh, how long you've been singing and, and how it all started. Um, I've been singing since three years old, and I think it started because both of my families, both sides, are very musically inclined. And my grandpa was actually um, a music teacher, and he played a lot of instruments. And throughout my childhood, there would always be music playing in the house or mm -hmm. the karaoke going. So I think that's how I got my start in singing. Now, you're doing a fundraiser here in Lloydminster coming up to help you get to uh, this trip and, and do everything that, yeah. that you need to do down there. So tell me a little bit about the fundraiser, where it is and when it is and, and what's going to be happening. So my fundraiser is going to be held on May 24th in the First Baptist Church here in Lloydminster. And um, the doors open at 5, and um, the show starts at 6, okay. and goes up till 9 o'clock. And I actually have invited some other local talents to come help entertain everyone, so. And uh, tell me, what kind of music do you usually perform? Is it a little bit of everything, or is there a certain genre that you like? Um, I like to dip into every genre, but um, specifically R&B and mm -hmm. um, gospel is my fortes, yeah. Okay, and Tony, tell me about the importance of having somebody like Rufi from Lloydminster uh, being in a competition like this. Like, this could mean big things for this him. This can um, mean big things. And in fact, uh, the World Championship of uh, Performing Arts uh, is where um, industry professionals go to look for fresh talents. Mm -hmm. Every year they go and, uh, and um, basically headhunt um, during uh, the 12 days of competition. So um, this is a big opportunity for Rufi and for any local talent, really. Mm -hmm. um, we've had some local talents participate before, but this is the first time where we're focusing and helping and uh, hopefully generate enough funds and interest in the uh, competition um, for, future, uh, for future development of the, of the city. The, he's competing for Team Canada, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, that's a big honor. Well, and if people can't make it to the show but would still like to donate or help financially, is there a way that they can do that? Um, yeah, they can make a call. Or they can mm -hmm. transfer funds, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to Rufi. And uh, we'll, uh, you can find him on Facebook okay. or myself, Tony Sertita. And uh, we'll, we'll certainly put the funds in, in good use. Yeah. Excellent. And, and Rufi, how excited are you about not just your fundraiser mm -hmm. here, but about the event in general? It's just so amazing. I'm so overwhelmed and so excited. And honestly, I'm just so happy to be um, involved in such a big event that's held. Like It's an international event. So mm -hmm. it's my very, very first um, contest, if you would say. So yeah. yeah, it's a big honor for me to be representing Canada as well. Okay, and, and just once again, before we wrap up here, tell me again the date and the time and the location of your fundraiser. So um, my fundraising concert is on May 24th. It will be held at 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and the show starts at 6, and it will be at the First Baptist Church here in Lloydminster. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Rufi and Tony, for thank joining you. me today, and good luck. We'll be following you all the way and, and wishing you the best. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Great. Hey, it's Sarah from Real Country 97.7, and here's your look at what's going on in St. Paul this week. The 10th Annual Spring and Home Based Business and Crafter Expo is coming to the St. Paul Rec Center. That's going down May 4th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and a few of the confirmed vendors are Cryptic Clothing, Bear All Wellness, Sweet Sheets, and Fifth Avenue Jewelry. For a full list of vendors and event details, you can head to Real Country 97.7 on Facebook or contact Pat Robinson at 780-614-7700. And it's time to dust off your sneakers for the run for RMHCA. That's happening May 4th in Cold Lake, and those funds go to the entire Lakeland. Choose to run or walk 5K, 10K, or even a half marathon. Adult prices are $25 for the 5K, 
35 for the 10 or 45 for the half marathon. You can register at mhcalberta.org or the day of at the event. More details up at realcountry977.ca. I'm Sarah and that's your look at what's happening in St. Paul this week. Furniture, supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Back on primetime local news to talk sports, but on the pro side of things with Josh and Buck. Hockey playoffs have been a madhouse, it feels <laughs> like, and it's not uncommon to see lots of upsets in hockey, but this no, seems a yeah, little ridiculous. Nothing like the first round, where you have all four division winners. You have the President's Trophy winner, doesn't even win a game in the opening round. I don't think anybody would have thought this. Nobody nope. would have thought this in Calgary, Winnipeg, Nashville, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh. Nobody would have thought this. Is it great for the game? You know what's going to happen? This gonna dis there's going to be discussions during the offseason. Exactly, does the alignment for the NHL playoffs work? And if you're in Pittsburgh, if you're in Tampa Bay, you're saying no. <laughs> uh, if you're in Columbus and you're, you know, New York Islander fan, it's great. Uh, yeah. So I think there's going to be a lot of debate during the offseason of what should change, if anything does. I think it's fair to say that in the mo in the moment, this is really cool because yep. the upsets are getting you headlines. It maybe hurts you that you don't have, in theory, two or three of the best teams playing in spring. And, you, and it, as the one thing about basketball is, unpredictable as it is, when a really great basketball team doesn't make it in the NBA, that ends up being uh, a ratings hurt for the NBA. Yeah, and it's a ratings, who's kidding who? If you're Rogers in Toronto, on those big tall buildings in downtown Toronto, the Maple Leafs losing out, there's probably guys diving off the 10th floor because it, it ain't a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a ratings killer. But if you look at the NBA, can almost guarantee you, Golden State's gonna be in the final. I don't know who's gonna play against them, but Golden State. Yeah. In the NFL, New England will be in the Super Bowl, just don't know who they're playing against. So in the NHL, you can't say who's gonna be in the Stanley Cup final. You really can't. Um, we might have a little bit later on who might be in that final against the Warriors on the NBA side of things. Yeah. But to stick with hockey quick, really quickly on the NHL awards, um, before we get kind of into all of yeah, the yeah. different awards, the main one, which is the main topic, of course, the Hart Trophy, Crosby, Kucherov, McDavid. Um, a little bit of debate as to whether McDavid should have been nominated. Do, does a guy get nominated for the Hart Trophy for a team that didn't make the playoffs? And I know Oilers fans, well, we didn't have him, what would we have? Well, he'd be a lot worse, you yeah. know, and you still wouldn't make the playoffs. Yeah. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't think he should. He's a great player, get it. You're the best player on the, on the planet? Yeah, probably. But should he win the Hart? No. But Cooch did in Tampa Bay, it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't get it, that's a, that's a crying shame. And I'm still on the camp of, I think, Mark Giordano should have won yeah. uh, the, the Hart Trophy. Not just nominated, yeah, yeah. I think he should have won, but I'm obviously a Calgary homer. You think Gio wins the Norris? Should. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't win it, there's something wrong. Okay. And are there any other award finalists that stood out to you that you want to touch on? Well, I, I think the Calder, there's a debate with the young goaltender in St. Louis, Bennington. Uh, he's had a great season, but he didn't really have as long as a season as Pedersen in, in Vancouver. Right. So he, Pedersen, should win at Vancouver, but what that goalie did in St. Louis is phenomenal, and he's the reason why they are playing right now. For sure. Um, i got to say, though, as a Flames fan, uh, it hates me to say this, but Pedersen killed us a couple oh, of times this he season. He did, so he did, he did. I got a first-hand view of that one. Um, another switch, let's go to back to the NBA where the Toronto Raptors are looking really good. Is it fair to say after this game one win against Philly, fingers crossed, because yeah, yeah. game two tonight, are they the Raptor, are they no longer officially the Raptors of old? Wow, that's a tough one to answer. I say Leonard is making a difference and will make a difference and they will get to the NBA final because of him. All right, now we have to rapid fire the next thing. So about 15 seconds on the Toronto Blue Jays and Guerrero's debut. Don't overlook everything don't say hey, he's gonna be the rookie of the year let the kid play yeah. and it was funny there was a poll out there will he be the rookie of the year before he even took his first at bat on Friday night just let the kid play and finally uh, let's get a quick look at tomorrow's show uh, Tuesday night sports show live from the Canadian Brew House Jeff Blair from Sportsnet we'll talk about Vlad Jr. also we'll talk at NHL playoffs with Wade Redden and also we'll be ta joined by Drew Remenda talking about the search for a GM with the Edmonton Oilers that is a very important search yes, yes. indeed that I'm sure many in this area will care yes. about. Thank you, Buck, and thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of Primetime Local News. 
Well, with Canadian Mental Health Week coming up here next week, we're talking about a new initiative being rolled out here starting on May 2nd in Vermilion, and that is the Move Your Mood initiative. It was a program, a pilot program that is, that was started in Red Deer and is now expanding to smaller communities to try and give them a little bit of help again in their mental preparations. We talked a little bit about how that food, your nutrition can also affect your mental health, and again, how this program is also not just for kids. There are some things before and after for parents, again, if they do want some more information, and again, how they can help their children if they do need a little bit of aid in that mental health category. We also talked a little bit about how they have the uh, physical activity part of it too, getting kids active and again allowing them to be active on their own and again just kind of experimenting and see what helps them out. So that's all from us tonight. We're going to send it back into the studio to finish off tonight's news. All right, thanks very much, Eric. Take a look at your seven day forecast one last time here. Four degrees tomorrow, the 55% chance of some snow with a low there, minus three, minus seven low there Wednesday with the 54% chance we'll get a rain snow mix there, the highest seven. Eight degrees on Thursday where the sun should come back out there, the low there, minus three, minus two the low for Friday as we get up to five degrees. The wind will pick back up close to 30 kilometers an hour, but a 65% chance of some showers. Six degrees on Saturday with a 55% chance of some rain there, minus four the low, minus five the low for Sunday warming up to seven with a 25% chance we'll get some rain there. Cloudy skies and cloudy again on Monday. Same percentage of sub precipitation with a nine of the daytime highs. So we're a little bit cooler for our averages of our lows and we're a little bit cooler for our averages for the highs. We're not quite at the double digits that we were over the last few days, but it's just at a point now where we're just gonna have to deal with it for the next little bit. Yeah, hopefully this is the last little stretch of winter. Um, obviously, I'm not at all surprised that this is happening just because it's Alberta and Canada and yeah. what do you expect? Yeah. But um, I'm hoping that this is the last little bit of snow that we're going to see till um, at least October. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Have a good night.